Hey, what's up? Hope you're doing well. Today is an important day. We're gonna be doing some mixing, baby. And this is what I do to all my tracks before I test them out in the club, or even a simple car test, and especially before I send them off to mastering. It's super simple, super effective, and can take less than like 20 minutes once you kind of get the memory down. So get ready to save yourself a bunch of money if you've been paying a mixing engineer to mix tracks that you're not even gonna release anyways. All right. Let's dive in. So step one, which to me is the most important one, is getting the mix right in terms of volume. My aim here is to hit two things. One, giving myself enough headroom on the master bus and getting a balanced mix without a compressor. Because trust me, if you can nail a mix without a compressor, it's a magical sound. And all right, confession time. When I first did this, I realized my use of a compressor was mainly to conceal my shortcomings and lack of expertise, and honestly, my laziness to getting a mix right. A compressor squashing everything just gave me, ability, gave me the ability to fast pass to the finish line with the thought that I knew what I was doing when I didn't. An illusion of authority, if you will. Anyway, enough about me, let's mix. So here's the tracking question. Right, super simple track, just the idea, a couple different stems here. I made this track and damn, that organ. There's also this other organ that's muted. Oh, get me feeling a certain way. Anyway, oh, I forgot what I was saying. I made this track in Logic, exported the stems from there, Logic on my iPad into live said no one ever, but this is the way I'm gonna work because I'm a little quicker and live right now. And it's just the idea and mixing as you go is also really important. But in this case, we're gonna skip that step because we already have the idea here. So first thing first, I'm gonna find my kick and set it to negative six dBs. And this will be with the visual aid of the meters, not so much just setting the level to negative six. Now we're gonna slowly work our way across from here and separate everything else by six decibels in terms of sound groups. So claps at minus 12, percussion at minus 18, auxiliary sounds at minus 24, and so on. So check it out, it gets surprisingly close. So here's my kick right here. I'm gonna go ahead and solo it. You can see it's kind of jumping and peaking between minus 12, minus six. If you're curious about um, Kind of controlling these peaks you could throw a compressor on here to catch those peaks for this specific track but in this case i'm okay with knowing that majority of the peaks are going to be right at minus six so i've already put a utility on here because i was doing audio over usb with the digitact and it's pretty quiet at times so with this utility i can just go ahead and turn it up until we start to see these kicks kind of lining up with that minus six decibels awesome now, of course, our next element here is gonna be our clap. And same thing, this has a utility on it. And I actually really prefer using utilities as opposed to moving these meters here because this only gives you an extra six decibels of gain going up where the utility can go all the way up to another 35, which is a ton. You don't need to go that high, but maybe you do and you won't be able to do that with these meters here. So check this out. This being our clap, I want it to fall at minus 12, which is six decibels lower than our kick. Awesome. Now let's listen to track three, which is a little percussion sound. And again, this is kind of an auxiliary sound, nothing too prominent or crazy important. What it's gonna do is solidify the bed of rhythm and groove across our track. And these usually live in the minus 18 to minus 24 range. And the great thing here is that in live, I don't know if this was intentional, you can already notice 0, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. These all move down in six decibel increments. I don't have a mixer around to see if any other mixers do that, but it's really, really handy. So looking at this percussion here, it's kind of right at 18. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it there. We might move it later, who knows? Ah, our up hat. Okay, so this, you might expect that you want it to be very prominent and driving, right? But up hats can, or hi hats in general, can cut through a mix really hard and be really in your face. And in step three, I'll show you how to kind of get some more width and let your hi hats kind of glue into the mix a bit better. But for right now, we're just gonna set the volume using the fader because I don't like pushing the fader past zero, but I don't mind bringing it down. I should have been more clear about that earlier. 
So I'm gonna just drop it down a little bit. Cool, minus one decibel, so where are we at here? Same thing, this is the same as the up hat to me. This is a little bit of a groove or a group together. Same thing, we'll go here and I'll just boost this up. That's cool, I dig that. Our ride, so this uh, is very much just a textural sound and we can go either way. We can see what it sounds like at minus 24. Really fills up a lot of space or if you wanted to take it down to minus 30, this is way more just texture based, right? But let's put it at minus 24 and see where it lands up with everything else kind of coming in. Now we're moving down to the bass line, which is this weird ass bass line I came up with, right? You see here, there's no utility, but I'm gonna go ahead and add one, Command F, I'll type in UT and then hit enter. And it should have put it on there, but it didn't, but that's okay. So we'll boost this up. I want this to be minus 12. And if I go ahead and just solo our kick and this, I want our kick and our bass to be six decibels away from one another. I always find that that kind of creates a good mix. So again, this is just ballpark estimation. So easy, there we are. Here's this little movie sample of vocals. Let's see what comes back in. And see, that's falling right at minus 24. That's cool, I'm happy with that. Let's go into the expander synth. Now, this here, this expander synth, I'm gonna go ahead and throw utility on it as well. UT, hit enter, boom, there it is. We'll grab its gain. And just using the arrow keys on my keyboard, I wanna go ahead and push it up a little bit and see what it's like at minus 12. And you can see, it's pretty loud, pretty heavy right here, right? Another thing we can do, Command F, I'm gonna type in eight. That's gonna bring up EQ8, I press down, hit enter, and I can shave off a lot of the low end because I know that these expander chords, this is from my expander sample pack, link down below, there's a lot of bass, so I always end up having to shave off anything under 100. So if we were to just solo this, watch, this is before. See how heavy that is? And then this just kind of cleans it up. Again, in, in the moment when you're playing it by itself, it sounds huge. This is a thing with Oberheims. They take up so much of your mix. They have such a massive sound. But when you want to mix it in with everything else, you really need to find a place for it and start carving out things using an EQ. So this also goes along with the whole mixing thing. Um, and same with a lot of these sounds here. Like, for example, if I really wanted, I can just take this, hold down Option, and drag it onto any of these. And this is just going to help me remove anything, any low noise texture that might still be up in there from when I recorded those sounds. Like a snare hit might have some weird thud in the bottom that we don't necessarily need to get the point across that it's a snare drum, right? Let's play this back here. Now with the, this bass and this kick, right? Kind of throw some more stuff in here. Awesome, not bad. We got this short organ. This, I'm gonna leave out for now because it's a decent element, but I want that to kind of be the pinnacle of the track. Now, next up is the long organ. And this sound here, I think it fits really well. Now, one of the benefits about using this like minus six dB weirdness is you'll start to see where sounds want to land and pushing them towards their nearest minus six decibel check mark, I guess, if you will, kind of, again, helps speed up the process of decision and deciding where things should be, right? Because you're like, if the world is endless, it's hard to choose, choose which path to take. But if there's only two to choose from, it's a lot easier. Does this one sound better or does that one sound better? Up or down? If it's down, cool. If it's up, cool. On to the next sound. So in this case here, it's kind of in this minus 24, and I ain't mad at that. I'm kind of down with that. Let's boost it up a little bit. Right, let's go to 18. That's way too loud, way too in your face. I'll leave it right there. That's cool. Now let's go to our strings. And see, this is texture. I love strings as texture. And similarly with texture, we'll go ahead and solo this. I'm gonna type in eight. We'll throw an EQ8 on here. And now I'm gonna carve out a ton of sound. And again, just make this be way textury. And we'll set this to this. 
And then I'm also going to take three, turn our cue up, and see if any of these sounds are kind of annoying to my ear. Like this one's a little funky to me. I'll just turn that one down a little bit, carve it out. Again, before, after. And you can see it lowered our volume a ton because we took so much out, right? Before it's at 36. I like that volume, but I kind of like this texture more. Post EQ, after it, I'll add the utility and turn this back up to that minus 36. Now let's hear that with everything. We'll mute this for now. Take it out. You see that? When it's there, it's almost hard to hear, but it fills the space. And when I take it out, super down with that. Now let's check this one out here, this little percussion loop. So this percussion loop actually should be way over here with my drums. And you can see it's jumping way the F up here. I don't want that. We'll go ahead and add a utility and bring that down a little bit. We'll put it at minus 18. And here's another thing. So check this out. It's that one pop, pop, pop. That's really pushing it up here. Uh, shout out to Hada who showed me this plugin, which I think is really cheap or maybe even free. It's called Soft Limit by Apogee. This will grab those transients that jump really high up and squash them down without too much loss, but you can make it to the point where there is a bit of loss, which sounds really good. But watch this, I can really level this out. Oh, and we'll turn auto makeup off. There, now we're starting to really reduce some sounds. Look at that. Remember that pop, pop. It's no longer peaking way up here. If we turn the soft limit off, and with it, Listen to that, the sound's almost the same. Of course, it's a little different, but it helps mask the craziness of the transients because sometimes with transients, again, shout out to Hada, the absolute legend when it comes to anything music making. Check out his stuff, I'll, I'll link it down below, it's insane. He was mentioning to me that when you're just going off of visual aid with the meters, it's really easy to get confused because digital meters don't work anything like VU meters from back in the day because digital meters can read so much more information at once that things can happen before we can even really hear them, right? So in the case of this, this kind of helps squash the false volume that I would otherwise think this is hitting minus 18 dBs when in a sense it is, but not so much to the point where it actually matters to the weight of the song. I hope that makes sense, and I hope I explained that correctly. And Tahada, if I didn't, roast me in the comments below. I'll pin your comment and let everybody uh, learn a valuable lesson here. So now, with this here, I want to bring this up to minus 24. Right? Let me... Oh, man. See, I did this here, and just out of fear, I'm going to add another utility because why not? I can. So now let's bring this up to minus... Let's do minus 18. I like these percussions. Ah, too loud. We'll go minus 24. Yeah, right there, right in the back, right? So this is our mix. Boom. Now check this out. If we go back and listen to this version, this is pre-mix. Pretty good. The kick's a little loud. Other things kind of fall behind. Right? And then we go here. The string sounds present. I can hear the ride. Everything sounds a bit more open, a little open-ended. And this is just the first step of what we really want to do with this track. And of course, in here, I'm just talking about volume. I'm just trying to get the volume of these sounds ready to go. A lot of times when I'm making these sounds, I'm using the Digitac or a synthesizer, and I'm already using filters to kind of EQ it. So I didn't do a lot of EQing here. And the only loop I really used was uh, this one little loop that we just finished up here called Solid Eyes. And this is just like some Apple loop that was in Logic that I thought was really cool. So all these other sounds already have filters on them, which is why I didn't have to EQ them that much. Okay, step two, picking the star of the bass world. Now, this is up to you, and I go back and forth depending on what I want my track to focus on, but our goal here is to choose whether we want the bass line or the kick drum to drive the song forward. And if you want the kick to be the star, you're probably making something a bit more up-tempo, harder, uh, possibly like a tighter, more quantized track, right? Think techno or some lo-fi house grunginess. But 
For this track specifically, a little more loosey-goosey, I want the bass, which is that weird-ass pattern that I made, to be the star. This means my kick will take a back seat, and that's okay. The kick will help emphasize that bed of the rhythm and the groove of our track and not necessarily need to be so loud and proud up front. And how we do this is like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab our bass and I'm gonna move it up to the top next to our kick. I'll just put it right on top of our kick so we still have our drums kind of in the same section. And looking at these two here, boom, boom, I'm gonna go ahead and solo these here, bam and bam, and play it from the top. It's so simple, check this out. So I want the bass line to be the star. I'm gonna add an EQ8 to our bass line and do a really sharp like four pole drop off at maybe 23, 24. We don't need anything lower than that, right? In clubs, nobody's looking for that 19 hertz brown note. I've just solidified the bass. This is gonna be the lowest point of our song of, of, of frequency. Now, we need to control our kick. Our kick wants to live in that area as well. Again, adding an eight here, EQ8. Same thing, we'll go to this low cut here. And I'm gonna set this one to 50. Now, all we've done is given space for the bass to breathe. That's it. And if this was in reverse, you're giving the kick space to thump and the bass will not be robbing the kick's space. Holy crap, I actually think I said that right first time around. Not bad, uh, but I hope that makes sense because it can be kind of confusing at first. All we're doing is letting the bass live below 50 and letting the kick stay above 50 with everything else. And that's gonna let us have a little bit of a cleaner mix when it comes to this bass line shining through and the kick still bumping. Because watch, if I just solo the kick and we take this off it's very rare that it makes that big of a difference but again we want to clean up this low end space because if that wasn't there there's all this here that's still happening and that's muddying up the base so just cut that out this is the meat of our kick here easy peasy really helps everything look the kick is still bumping the kick is still slamming up here and just to be safe, I'm gonna go ahead and add another one of those soft limits to our kick drum to grab that little peak that's flying up above six. Look at that, boom, I just threw it on there. It's set to minus six. Now anything going above minus six kind of gets squashed down. We can bring it down a little bit and then increase its gain a little. Oh, yes please. And there's no side chain or nothing on this, but I wanna side chain the crap out of this do that really quick just because I really want to hear it. So compressor, open this up, side chain, input from, we'll do the kick. Our ratio, we'll go to 10. Turn the threshold down. Open up that release a little. Turn this up a little. Right, grab this, hold down option, drag it onto this track here, which is our base. Open this up a little. To help shave it off, let the bass and the and the kick kind of groove off of one another. Again, just kind of helping it breathe, helping it all live together. And this expander, Command F, I'm gonna hit up Auto Filter. Throw this on here. Say we take the long organ out here. Oh man, those strings are so sick. Without them. Now the ride is there, super present, right? And there's no compressor here. If we look at our master, all we have is a limiter at minus 30, but we're not even getting close. We're giving ourselves plenty of headroom. I mean, ooh, that's actually getting kind of close. Another pro tip, I am doing this whole minus six thing, starting at minus six. In reality, I usually start at minus 12 and work my way down from there. But minus six is a little easier to understand because it's the first tick here in your meters. All right, final stretch. Step number three. This is just some finishing touches that help add depth and width to your track. Now, there's a ton of ways to do this and all of them are wrong. And 100% correct, nothing matters. Just do what you wanna do. But one of my favorite ways to do this is using reverb on my hi-hats to spread them out in the stereo field. 
It's such a simple technique, but so powerful. Also, shout out to Craig Williams for teaching me this ages ago. He's a total mixing music production wizard. Go check out his channel down below and tell him I said, what's up and where's my money? <laughs> Kidding. Anyway, uh, check this out. So we're gonna play this back. And we honestly only just have these two hats here. So let's say this extra hat, I want this to be a little further back in the mix. So what I'm gonna do is on this hat, again, Command F, I'm gonna type in reverb, just the most basic reverb. We're just using the default, whatever the DAW gives us, it's good enough, right? That's it. I'm, I use plugins once in a while, but everything in here is like, come on, it's so good. What we wanna do, just listening to this, we wanna open this up, make sure it doesn't cut out too much of our hat, which really lives up in these higher frequencies. We'll turn our pre-delay down, that's fine. And then our decay, like around, you know, anywhere under half a second, so under 500 milliseconds. If I turn our wet all the way up, this is like this stereo with diffused reverb sound. And we can really push how far this is. And what reverb is, is kind of reflections in a room, right? That's what it's trying to simulate. If I start bringing in our dry, this is just changing the balance between how loud our wet and how loud our dry is. And watch without this, it's right in our face. And that's okay if you want that, but I want stuff to kind of sit a little further back. And also take note of volume, because watch, if I turn this off, see where it spikes? We're back to minus 18. So similarly, you can kind of use this as a mixing tool. Start all the way dry. Let it kind of fall back a little bit. That's cool. I'm gonna go ahead and boost up our utility. And yes, I know this is pre all this stuff and it might change it a bit, but a lot of these things aren't gonna get changed too heavily. So I'm okay with that. That's cool. Now let's go ahead and hold this, hold down option and drag it onto our closed hat or our up hat, I should say, and repeat the same process. The settings are here. Maybe we'll add a little bit more pre-delay on this one. So we'll turn our wet all the way up. Right, now we're just changing the depth and the time of the room. And this is all personal preference because now you're working with two different simulated rooms. You're getting a little complicated. The space that you're living in or where the song is living in is now otherworldly, if that makes sense. It's a space that doesn't exist having two different reverbs in the same room where you're listening to the same track. Then take into account you're playing this at a warehouse, right? There's no sound treatment. It's bouncing off the walls. Everything's cement or metal or maybe it's for Spotify. There's so many things to consider. Who cares? But okay, now we're here. Let's drop this down, slowly bring it up. Okay, cool. Before, right in the front. This kind of helps it sit back a little. And see, look, you can hear that they're a little quiet now. And this one specifically, our up hat, I do want that to be a little more driving. So I'm gonna go ahead and pump the brakes a little on this and turn its volume up a little. Here we go. Yeah, that's cool. So then here, this, I want this to be very prominent actually. So we'll bring this up, but I still want it to be wide. There it is. Now look, I'm veering off, right? Yo, you told us to stick to minus six. Yeah, to get in the ballpark. And as you go, you kind of break it a little bit, you push it a little bit, and you kind of find where it wants to live. You know, this is so sick. Now, this last little short organ. I'm gonna add a gate to this because there's a weird delay that I added that I don't really like. We'll see if we can fight that. Okay, cool. Now I'm gonna add some reverb. It's a little quiet, but let's add an EQ8, shave off a little bit of this low end. And I'm gonna grab. Find the frequencies I like. And then we'll take four, shave that off, give it that vinyl -y sound. Oops, my bad, 10,000 is what I wanted to do. Lower it down. There it is, right? Go to our kick. Take that kick out. Bring our strings, wait for it. Da, 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 da. Yes, 
I'm gonna lower this and I know that it needs to go back up to zero. Now I'm just performing. Oh boy, here we go. Yo, and there's nothing on the master. This, I would play in a club. I would test it out, try it out. Yo, all right, let's do one last little thing. Let's go ahead and add my little secret sauce multiband compressor. There it is, and we're just gonna boost up those highs just a little bit. That's really it, my friend. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something here today. It's always so good to see you. And again, until next week, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. Check that cake out. Open it up.